Hi guys, this is Gladia from Gladia's Naturel. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I know you guys clicked on this video because you are curious about what type of products are you using in your hair? And that is a good curiosity to have because you want to know what exactly are you putting in your hair? So you're probably a type of person like me who have hair on your head and you purchase products like shampoos, conditioners, leave-ins, all these types of products that you are constantly bombarded with, um, whether they were recommended by friends, by family, uh, um, influencers that you follow, YouTube videos, things like that, ads, you see it all over the place. And each new product that come out is like, you know what, I think I should get that because it probably will solve the problem, the current problem that I'm dealing with, whether your problem is I need to grow my hair or I'm dealing with um, moisturization problems or my curl pattern is still not as revealed or as defined as I'd like it to be. Like we have a whole bunch of different reasons um, why we purchase a product because basically the end result is to find that one that works for you. And there are times it will work, right? You get it and you ha and you love it. Um, and then, you know, other times it doesn't work and now you're piling up on these products and you probably have a, a, a junk drawer just filled with products galore and you're probably either using all of them or none of them at all, right? And so everywhere we turn, we can find different products being thrown at us um, to basically buy, right? Now, how do I know what products will work for me? Like what products is safe for me? What products is safe for my family? Those are the information that is not being clarified to you. They're just basically telling you the things that looks good, the things that are, you know, uh, are immediate results, okay? But the long-term effects that can happen when you're using a product that has a toxic ingredient, that right there is not usually disclosed. And this is what I wanna reveal to all of you. This is what this video is going to be about. It's going to help you become more aware about the products that you're using and what is inside of that product in particular. What ingredient in particular am I putting in my body or on my body? And how do I know which ones to say, no, no, I'm not using that. And which one I'm like, I, right, you know, not too bad. And then which ones I'm like, definitely, this is the product that I need that I know is going to give me the result, but ultimately is not going to be harming me in any kind of way. So when you think about your children, when you think about the small ones, the, the, the precious ones in your life, you always want to give the best, right? You want to give the best foods, the best school, the best everything like if you had if money wasn't an object we will all have the best of the best right because it, you feel like that's what you deserve and it's the same thing when it comes to the hair products that you have you want to give the best to your children to your precious one to the people you love and you also want to give that back to you as well so you, somebody who i'm talking to right now what is your ultimate goal in life in everything that you do i'm sure you're not saying you know what I want something that's going to be giving me cancer later. <laughs> or I want something that's going to make me die or make me really, really sick in the future or in the long run. Nobody in their right mind would ever want to say something like that. But is that sellable, right? What you don't know don't hurt, right? Ignorance is blissful. So right now, we're pulling you out of that state of mind where you didn't know this information and now we're pulling you back and we're opening your eyes so you can see everything around you and how you can act better when you see a particular product that you probably were thinking about buying but now the insights that you were given you are much more wiser about what you're choosing and what you're going to be putting in your body. So this is what this video, this video is going to be about. We're about to help you dive in and understand how to do that. First of all, I want you guys to know I am a nurse. I have been a nurse since 2011. So over nine years now, I have been a nurse and I've worked in many different fields. But one of the best places that I was able to work in is at a holistic medicine practice. And working there really opened my eyes to all the different 
types of problems that occurs in our life, not only because of age or genetic makeups, but just by the everyday things that we're using in our life, just the everyday things that you are um, exposed to. And one of those things are, you know, could be ma the materials that you're around, the pollution that, uh, uh, um, the chemicals that are in the air, the, 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 the environmental pollution that we're dealing with. Our body deals with a lot. And one of the things that we are now doing, we're putting products in our hair and we're not understanding how that too can affect our health in the long run. And this is where we need to draw the line when it comes to, okay, what are some things I can start removing from my body? What are some things that I can start eliminating and reducing these toxins in my, in my body? I don't, I definitely don't want to be constantly putting products that are um, like harmful to me, right? We just want to just make sure that what we know is beneficial to us now and for the rest of our lives, right? All right. So guys, again, I told you I've been a nurse. I had a pleasure of meeting people who um, come from all different lives, from all different backgrounds and everything. And they all had something in common toxins. They all came in with some type of disease. And when you would track down where the problem started out from or where it, it began, it usually started from the stuff that we started to put in our body, whether it was the food that we were eating, it was the clothes that we were wearing, it was the products that we were using. Those were the things that were con big contributors in your life. So let's give an example because you're probably thinking, how can one product really, really cause that much problem to, to my health? Like, how could it spiral out of control like this that all of a sudden now I have cancer or I have um, liver disease or whatever? So think about how often you wash your hair. You know, you could be somebody who washed their hair. Let's, let's just use the scenarios I've probably seen in my lifetime, you know, you could probably wash your hair. Let's say you wash your hair every, every week, right? So in a month, you're washing your hair four times a week. You're also conditioning. And then like most people, they're putting at least two up to like five products at a time in their hair. So anything that ranges from conditioners, leave-ins, gel, um, creams, moisturizers, uh, 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 humectants, I mean, name it, you're probably just okay, next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing, putting in your hair. And most of us don't even know how, if we're really even using the products, right? So you're just dumping the very next thing in your hair in the hopes that it gives you the result that you're looking for, right? So if you're that type of person, because I've done it myself, I've, I've had one, two, three, four different products and didn't understand of the, like when, when to use this or when to use that. Most of the time after I wash and condition my hair, I'm putting every other product in my hair after that because I, I'm thinking that's what I need. So imagine I'm doing that four times a month. Now we just listed about almost five to 10 products right now. And you're using each in a month, you're using that four times. So 10 products times four, 40 times a month already with just this product. So now imagine each of those products has that one main toxin in there. That's like a level 10. A level 10, meaning that it is the worst of the worst, like nobody should be using it. But somehow these things are slipped into our products um, and we're, we're, we're exposed to it. So now imagine that product, that ingredient in your product, in all those products, as a matter of fact, and you are using it 40 times a month. Now, can you actually develop an actual disease from that? I hope you said yes, because that's what it will do. So we want to be able to understand like, okay, okay, now I, now I know that one product can really affect my body based on usage. If I'm using a product once every other month or, you know, once a year, like that's like <laughs> very, very minimal. 
you probably won't have as much concerns or as much exposure or toxin induced as you would think. But something like excessively using like our hair requires people with natural hair, you and I who has natural hair, we require lots of products, okay? Our shampoo, our conditioner runs out a lot more frequently than other people who doesn't have as much hair as we do, right? Our hair is much more thicker, so it requires a lot more product. So we're not using a a drop of this. We're using a uh, <laughs> a, a, a glop of that. That's what we're using. That's the word we use when we need. And I'm not using one glop. I'm probably using four or five in order to get my hair to drench, um, get my hair to be soaked into that product or get that product soaked into my hair in other words so imagine that one product i could finish probably a conditioner after two sessions it will be done so now look how many products so if you don't even know how much uh in like maybe a drop of that product how much of that toxic ingredient is located in that how much of that toxic ingredient make up the entire product but you were able to finish it over the time i want you guys to Think of it in that sense, like how much of a toxin you can be exposing your body to just based on the, the, the usage amount. And we want to be more aware of those things. So I want you guys like, now you're like, okay, great, Gladia. I know that I don't want to use toxins in my hair. I know that excessive amount of use is going to like really affect my hair. But after all that information, how do I um, like figure out which one is worse uh, than the other? Or how do, you know, how do I, how, how do I quickly realize a product that's not good for me? Okay. So here's my levels. I have three levels. I have level one, level two, and level three. Level one is like when you think of products that are the worst of the worst okay level one would be like um like formaldehyde formaldehyde that's one of the ingredients that i'm like it's if you look it up you'll be surprised that's a level 10 toxin and we have found it in our carpets we have found it in many different places in our household including in our hair products so if i see like a product so level one products will be like things that um products that are in the rate has been rated as 10, meaning it's toxic, period, point blank. No matter how you use it, no matter the amount you're using, it's already starting to affect your body to a certain level. And the more you're exposed to it, the worse that happens to you. So my my rule of thumb is if I'm picking up a product and I'm looking behind it, remember, you pick up a product, you look in the back, you see the ingredients, I'm, I want to be able to read what I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm I want to be able to read what I'm looking at. Okay. So for example, if there's a long word that you just, just cannot read it, it's usually like, okay, maybe that product is not for me. Then you have level two, which is mild, meaning it has some products I was able to read. And then some products that were uh, um, unclear, like it was just long words. And then I have my level three products, which are like, oh, this is it. This is the one. Everything on there was clear. It was saying water, aloe. I know what these are. I know coconut oil. I know this. I know that. So these are the different things that kind of make you make a decision about which one is worse and which one I want to um, use and which one I kind of just want to stay away from because it's it, it, it may be destructive. Okay. So level ones, you just want to stay away from. And then level two, you you can make a decision. It depends on how often you're using it. You may be able to keep, keep using it going forward. And then you have your level threes where you're like, these are what I call my DIY products, like things that you can make at home. Guys, DIY is one of the best ways to ensure that you're not putting any type of toxins in your body. And there are plenty and plenty of DIY um, hair products that you can make yourself at the comfort of, you know, in your home. So these products is not hard to find because you can find it anywhere, like in your uh, um, kitchen cabinets, in your fridge. These are products that you can actually ingest because they are safe. So here's a rule. Here's a little tip for you guys. Aloe is one of my favorite, favorite DIY um, um, hair product or, um, um, you know, just one of those products that you can get. And you're like, 
it's a jack of all trades. You can use it with just about everything. Aloe, I can use it for shampoo. I can use it for conditioner. I can use it for moisturization. I can use this product just about, I use it on my face to, to clear up acne. You can drink it to basically uh, um, help you to go to the bathroom. Aloe, guys, go to Pinterest and Google Aloe. Go on Pinterest, look up aloe, go on YouTube, look up aloe, and you are going to find a massive amount of information on how al how beneficial aloe is. And I use aloe as my DIY because it is so much safer. It's not a toxin. Unless you're allergic to it, that is completely different. Then you will just find something else that you're not allergic to. But the worst that can happen is that somebody's just allergic or sensitive to it, not create a toxin in your body. You see the difference? So you now feel comfortable that you're putting something in that works for you. But guess what? It's not working just for you, but your children and everyone that you love and everybody in your family. And then on top of that, it is also giving you the results. So I hope you're taking notes right now. All right. So now that you know what, what you know, like how do, what do I look for in a product? How do I uh, um, understand if it's something I should take or leave? Now you need to know, okay, these particular products in particular, uh, um, you need to know those exact ingredients now that um, are out there. Guys, there are many, there's too much to, be, to even list. We were able, I was able to compile just a short list of 35 ingredients that are very common in the products that we use that are deemed to be toxic. And these are the ones that I'm gonna go over with you. And don't worry, it is gonna come in the um, the booklet that I'm going to be sending to you along with this video that you're watching. You're gonna have it um, with you as well. And you're gonna be able to read through it and print it and take it with you. So I want you to know the kind of harms that can happen. And then I'm gonna list to you all the ingredient, the 35 ingredients as well that sorrowful. So here is the harms that can happen if you use a product excessively or too much and it has a toxin in there. Here's what can happen, cancer. You guys know what cancer is. You probably had a family who member or a friend or even yourself have experiences. It's not, it's not a laughing matter, it's a deadly condition. This can take your life away. It can. Uh, uh, um, give you developmental problems. It can disrupt everything in your life, especially your health, and you don't want to be contributing to that. So cancer is the number one on the list that these ingredients can potentially cause to you. Developmental and reproductive toxicity, okay? So the ingredients linked to developmental and reproductive um, toxicity is a broad class of health effects that range from infertility and reproductive organ cancers to birth defects and developmental delays in children. We don't want that. Our babies are our prize and we wanna make sure we're giving them the best. Allergies and immunotoxicity, as I said, these things can cause um, Allergy, allergens, these things can basically re like weaken your immune system. So now you're unable to fight off infections and all sorts of things that doesn't belong in the body. There are products that needs to be used with restrictions. You went and you see that you just want to reduce the amount. That means there's strict safety guidelines that maybe in other countries and other places they removed it, but then where we live, they're not, they're still continuing to use it. Keep an eye out for those. Endocrine disruption. This is a hormone in our body that plays a major function that can be uh, um, uh, affected as well. Neurotoxicity. These are ingredients linked to harm to the brain and your nervous system, which is a class of health problems that can range from subtle developmental delays to chronic nerve degenerations. Guys, your nerve is what you make you feel and the, the nerves are what you can comprehend certain things. This can affect that in your brain. You have organ system toxicity. We have major, many, many different organs in our body. So these uh, um, are linked to toxicity of one or more biological systems in the body. For instance, cardiovascular, which is the heart, the stomach and digestive tract, or respiratory system where you're able to breathe and get oxygen into your body and through laboratories or studies of people. We also have biochemical or cellular level changes. These are ingredients that affect the body at a cellular level or biochemical level. So guys, think of a cell, 
one cell, how tiny it could be. Now imagine each toxin going into those cells. Now you can see it in a bigger picture, how much it can affect that whole entire organ or the entire system itself. Then we have persistence and bioaccumulation. This is after years and decades of exposure. This can now be resistant, meaning it's unable to break down. It's now like almost the, the this this class of um, toxin has been adaptable to our environment. Then we have ecotoxicity, ingredients linked to toxicity, toxicity of wildlife that may include fish, plants, or wild organisms. And then irritation as well, which is ingredients linked to, linked to irritation of the skin, eyes, or lungs. Then we have occupational hazards. These are just um, ingredients that workers are usually exposed to. You might find even those kind of chemicals in our products as well. We have enhanced skin absorption, which means your skin is now extra sensitive. So everything that gets into your skin now is pouring in and you're, you're just feeling the full effect of it. You're not resistant to anything anymore. Then you have contact contamination concerns, ingredients that may be con contaminated with toxic impurities, many of which are linked to cancer, according to government and cosmetic industry, ingredient safety assessment or peer reviewed study. So that just could be things that were next to something else. And it took in some of that toxin, even though it's supposed to clean. So even our, um, our environment has a large uh, um, role in what is how our ingredients are being um, exposed, okay? So we want to pay attention to that. So guys, now that you know all the effects that your body can go through, here's now the list that we're going to go. Again, it's just a, some of these lists, keep in mind, um, all of them is not a level 10. Some of them are even one to five, but over time, the studies are starting to show that these are starting to have some genetic effects on our body. Just keep an eye out for them. Um, there are links in the, the booklet that I'm sending to you that you'll be able to click on that link and then it'll take you to tell you how bad um, this ingredient, meaning what's rate. So usually a 10 is the worst of the worst, seven to 10 ranges or you wanna keep away from the ones that are five to six uh, is the in-between, that's my level twos. And then my level ones, um, my level ones, um, one, two, two, three are like the ones that are, um, like, you know, DIYs, meaning they, they're not really affecting you, but maybe over time, uh, consistent, consistent use may create some type of problem, but it's not no fair. But these links will take you to the ones that are the worst, okay? And also understand that some of these ingredients have about two or three other names that you may not even recognize. So they might give a different name and we put that in there. So just one ingredient, you will see three others like it or similar to it. And I want you guys to take note of it. When you get this booklet, just print that page and take it with you when you go shopping, product shopping, and just take a look around. So let me go through the list really quick and forgive me if I'm unable to read um, one or two words. I'm probably not going to be able to read all the words, but that's okay. Um, uh, just know that I want you to just start hearing them and understanding what they sound like. So ammonium, lauryl sulfate, benheno alcohol, cetyl alcohol, cetyl alcohol, chlorine, DEA, DMDM, ethanol alcohol, FDMC, color pigments, formaldehyde, which we talked about is in our carpets, it's in our products, big red flag product ingredient right there, fragrance, imidazolidinol, yeah, urea. <laughs> I just massacred that word. Um, isopropyl alcohol, lauryl alcohol, MEA, mineral oil, merosulfate, merosyl alcohol, parabens, petroleum, flakes, polyethylene glycol, propanol alcohol, propyl alcohol, propylene alcohol, SD alcohol, SD alcohol 40, silicone, sodium, alkabenzene, sulfonate, sodium, lauryl lith sulfate, sodium lauryl sulfate, sterile alcohol, synthetic colors, TEA, and then TEA, DAD, I'm not even going to try that one. <laughs> and then we have tol toluene, triclosan, and there's so many others, guys. Start getting familiar. The quickest way to do anything when you pick up a product, you want to look at the first five ingredients. If you have 10 or more ingredients, put it away. Put it away. Because it's usually... Um, when I mean 10 or more, I mean 10 or more ingredients that you just cannot read. 
Like you pick it up and you don't know what is what. It's a whole bunch of color. It's a whole bunch of fragrance. It's a whole bunch of, there's nothing that says coconut oil, nothing that says aloe, nothing that says something that's readable to you or understandable to you. You put it down. Just like if you pick up your food, you want to be able to read what you're eating. Banana. Great. Not biodenzoline, right? <laughs> we want to know what we are putting in our hair. That's all. That's the ultimate result. So if I have 10 products, the first five, I'm paying a very close attention to because I need them to be words I can read. So it's to say water, aloe, uh, um, uh, coconut oil, uh, avocado oil, um, blueberry, anything that is, you're like, oh, I know what that is. That's great. You want to keep that product. Anything that's otherwise, like maybe it has 50% of words you can't read and then 50% of those words that you can't read. You know what? You could probably give it a try if you feel up to it. And then you have those ingredients. Like I said, it's either you made it at home or somebody else who opened a DIY or their own product line and their products are strictly clean and they have the best of the best, then you can get that. You can go on there. Now, if you can't, you can't figure it out on your own, we also included a list of clean and trusted products, um, places where you can find these products, these products as well. So Think Dirty um, is one of my favorite places and many others, there's five of them that's in there. Go check them out, click it, look for a product that they recommend as a clean product and then see if that's going to be compatible with you and then go buy it, go to Amazon or wherever that they're linking it to, get that product and now have the peace of mind that you want, not only for yourself, but your friends, your family, and all the people that you love. This is all what we, this is all we want to do. We want to make sure that we live in this life the best way we can. And we're giving ourselves back the, everything that, you know, we didn't think we can have. Right. So when you know better, you do better. Right. So now that you have this information, take it with you and do something with it. Go wean out your products that you have in your, in your junk drawer. Take them out. Start going through them. So the things that, that you're like, oh my God, I've been using this for such a long time. Time to get rid of it. There's never too late to start doing right by you. So guys, I hope this was very helpful. Share this with your friends and your family. Let them know what's going on and enlighten them as you've been enlightening. Until then, I hope you have a safe and healthy, healthy lifestyle. Have a great one. Bye-bye.